is Liz and the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be one of my Sunday sewing catch-ups and we're on episode 82. I have had a short break of about a month off YouTube. Um, I posted on my community tab um, about a month ago. Um, there was a video that I'd put up. Um, it was a fabric and pattern haul for June. Um, and it caused quite a bit of drama between a few people commenting, leaving quite unkind messages. Um, so I did take the decision to delete the video. It did make me feel really upset and I just didn't have the headspace for it. Got loads of really lovely kind messages. So thank you so much to everybody for taking the time to send me messages on my community tab. I got some emails, I got messages on Instagram. I really do appreciate all of the kindness and um, all of the support as well. So thank you so much for sticking with me um, and for waiting for me to get back on the vlogging kind of bike. Um, I'm really looking forward to filming lots and lots of videos. I've got loads of ideas of videos as well. I did republish that video. I had lots of people saying, put it back up there. Don't let the unkind people win. So I did repost the video. Um, there was a couple of comments on there saying that I should have been kind of advocating for rights for various people. Um, and that is something that I did want to touch on in this video. I am incredibly busy. I talk about that in my videos all the time. I work full time. I have got a family. Um, one of my children is autistic and I've had to spend a huge amount of time advocating for their rights and fighting to ensure that they get exactly what they deserve. That takes a huge amount of time, a huge amount of energy and a huge amount of effort. And to be honest, I've only got it in me for one kind of, well, I say one kind of battle, but actually in my work, there's lots of battles going on in terms of education. Sewing, um, pattern buying, fabric buying, it's my hobby and I really, really enjoy it and I really enjoy sharing it with you. I don't have the headspace to be fighting lots of battles all at the same time. Um, so yeah, I took the video down, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit, but I took the video down, put it back up, but I chose not to have comments on there. I am open to constructive criticism and criticism that is going to help me grow and change and learn. What I'm not open to is people just having a go at me. Um, and I know that lots and lots of people on my channel that watch my videos aren't like that at all. And I really appreciate your support. This is a hobby to me. It's something that I really enjoy doing and filming videos and publishing content is also something that I just really, really enjoy doing. I don't claim to be an expert. I don't claim to know absolutely everything. And my aim is to inspire people to sew and help people to sew as well. So um, thank you so much for your support. I'm back with another Sunday Sewing Catch Up. And as a result of my break, I've got loads of things that I want to share with you today. So before I dive into all of the things that I want to share and before I tell you what I'm wearing, I thought I'd give you a bit of a life update and I have updated over on Instagram and I know loads of people, again, check in with me time and time again and I really appreciate your kindness um, for the difficulties that we've been kind of experiencing in the last couple of years as a family in terms of education for my eldest who is autistic. Education has been a real struggle um, we haven't really found the right setting, it's been quite overwhelming, there's been lots of mental health difficulties um, and as a result they haven't been in full-time education for about eight months. Um, it's been a really difficult time for us as a family, um, don't talk about it a huge amount, we have got lots of support um, but there has been a lot of kind of battles going on in the background um, which have been really exhausting. But as a family, we have finally uh, got the right setting for our eldest and they started at a specialist provision two weeks ago. And for the first time in eight months, they did a full day of school, which was just incredible. Um, and the difference in them, they're just super happy. Obviously, we still have meltdowns and there's still a lot of dysregulation um, that happens, but they're excited about going into school and talking positively about education for the first time in a really long time. So I just wanted to update you that things are finally moving in the right direction for us as a family. And I'm really happy that it's happened this side of the summer holidays. So hopefully we can have a really positive summer break and they can be really excited about getting back to school in September too. 
So on to what I'm wearing. I've dug out lots of my summer dresses. It's been quite windy in London this weekend. Um, I've only got to pop out to go to a couple of shops this afternoon when the wind hopefully will die down. But it's still quite warm. So I've popped on one of my favourite summer dresses. I don't wear it very often actually. And every time I pop it on, I think, why don't I wear this very often? I've dug out the pattern because I couldn't actually remember the name of the pattern. So I went through my pattern stash, dug out the pattern so I'll show you what it is. It's a pattern by Experimental Space and it's called the Rosalie dress. Um, it's got this beautiful cutout detail here. Quite a scooped back, but um, you've got bra coverage, which is great. And a little bit of a scooped front as well. And you can see that on me. It's not super low, but it is a little bit of a lower sort of neckline. This dress comes in size, so they don't do like your typical 6 to 30, 6 to 34. They give the um, pattern sizes names. So it starts at an Ava and goes up to a Gia, G-I-A, I think I'm saying that correctly. So the bust for an Ava is a 31 inch bust, waist is a 24.5 inch waist and a 31.5 inch hip. I'm only reading out the measurements because it's not like your standard sizes. And then for the Gia, it's a 43 inch bust, 36 and a half inch waist and a 43 and a half inch hip measurement. It's a swooshy maxi dress with a beautiful deep back and a pretty cutout on the lower back. It's bra friendly, it's concealed by a zip along the sides of the concealed zip here and it's got really deep pockets and it has got really deep pockets. This fabric I think was from Fursa Fabrics and it is really swooshy. I'm going to stand up on my chair but it's really swooshy this dress um, and this fabric, absolutely love it. <clears throat> And then you've got very deep pockets, like you can see my whole hand, the pocket stops like down here, so they're really deep. Um, it's got a waistband, it is quite fitted on the bodice, and then you've got the concealed zip, not quite so concealed at the bottom. I made this years and years ago um, when I was still learning about concealed zips. And then that's the back detail. So it's a really pretty dress, I love this fabric. And then I've just got on a yellow gingham headband to match the yellow um spots and then i've just got some sapphire frills lightning bolt earrings um that kind of match the pastel vibe that i'm going for haven't got any shoes on at the moment and this is a maxi length dress so if i stand up yeah it's maxi length it goes right down not quite to the floor um but it covers my ankles um i'll put some pictures in of the dress so you can see what it looks like and with anything that I talk about, if I don't have line drawings or images, I will put pictures in as well. And where possible, I'll link all of the things down below in the description. Um, if I don't link something, it means it's out of stock. So in that case, I'll just link the website that I used. So that's what I'm wearing. That was a really long rambly introduction. So well done if you have stuck with me. Um, I do think this video is going to be a very long one. So if you want to pause the video and grab yourself a drink, um, I think I'm going to be talking for a long time. I've got lots of things that I want to share with you, including lots of things that I've been sewing, but also lots of fabric and a couple of patterns too. So let's get started. The other thing to say, I know it's the height of the summer in the UK, but I have got a cold. So I might have to keep pausing the video if I need to have a cough or if I need to sneeze. Um, it's definitely more than hay fever. I do suffer really badly with hay fever from like March to September. Um, but this is more than hay fever. So apologies if I sound a bit snuffly um, and I might have to stop start the video if I need to go and get a drink or something. But yeah, full of a cold. I've got one week left of school and then I'm hoping I can do some resting and kind of get, old, get over my cold. It's just been a really, really busy time at school. This term is always super busy. I've got lots of things going on with transitions. So thinking about the current cohort going up to their new year group then have to start thinking about all of the new children that are going to be starting with us, contacting nurseries, meeting parents. Um, yeah, it's just a super busy time. So one more week to go. Um, it is going to be a busy week. We've got a trip. Uh, we had to cancel our trip last week because it was raining. Um, but I am going to be taking the children out on a trip. And then we've got lots of other things that are happening this week too. Very exciting. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about the summer holidays. And quite a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is um, kind of thinking about the summer holidays and I've definitely got some fabrics and patterns in mind for some summer holiday sewing which I'm very excited about. So on to what I've been busy sewing. So I have absolutely loved sewing the Tilly and the Buttons SD Co Ward set, very much thinking about my summer holidays. 
And actually I'm really enjoying sewing shorts and I'm also really enjoying wearing shorts at the moment. Um, and I've been using the Tinny and the Buttons SD Coord set to sew up the shorts. So I've been doing the longer length top that stops at your waist so I can tuck it into the shorts. And I had some fabric from Hazel Sister, which I talked about, I think I've talked about this already, um, where I had plans to sew it up as a top and some shorts. And that's exactly what I've done. So I've used the Tinny and the Buttons SD and I've just sewn up some really cute shorts. They've got elastic in the waist. And I have, not that you can tell because it's such a busy print, but I've got the patch pockets in the back. I have got a picture of me wearing this set. So I will put a picture in of me wearing this. Um, yeah, that's the front. What I did do, I have found, and I know various people have found this with the SD top. It depends on the fabric that I'm sewing the top in as to whether I get the gaping at the middle. With this one, I did take out a little bit of um, sort of the width of the top here where the straps go. It has meant that it's not quite covering my bra strap, but it has meant that the middle part here doesn't gape and it sits much flatter um, across my chest. I've done that for this version and the other version that I've sewn up. And then there's another SD top that I've sewn up where I experimented by taking out some of the um, width out of the center front, but actually um, that has made the top too small. So Lola's got that top. So I'm gonna go back to taking it out of this section here and here. Um, and that has stopped it from gaping. There's another top that I sewed up, I think my very first version of the SD, where I didn't find that it gaped at all. That was in the yellow and pink kind of gingham fabric, and that was a brushed cotton. I don't know whether, because that fabric had a bit more structure, that's why it didn't gape in the middle, but I did find with the viscose one that I sewed up using the So Hilly Jane fabric, it did gape a little bit. So with this version, I just experimented by taking a little bit out here. Um, it doesn't quite cover my bra, bra straps now because obviously the straps are slightly more in, um, but it has stopped it from gaping at the middle. So that's the first set. And then I had another um, viscose linen fabric from Heise Sister in this gorgeous fabric. And I've done exactly the same. So I've just sewn up the shorts. Um, it's a really beautiful fabric. It's got the patch pockets on the back. And then I've got the top. I'm just making sure I show you the right way around. Really simple top, and I think this is going to be perfect for when we're on holiday. I've also been wearing this when the weather's been super warm um, in London, and I never really used to like wearing shorts because I get psoriasis on my knees, but actually I've just been wearing them. I feel so much more comfortable when it's really hot, so I've just been embracing wearing them, and I don't think anyone's really looking at my knees. So I've been really kind of encouraging myself to just wear the shorts, um, and they're really comfortable to wear as well, actually. Um, and then I've been working on, and I talked about this in one of my videos, I bought some fabric from Heise Sister, this gorgeous fabric here in the pink colourway. I bought it in the blue colourway, and then I also bought it in the yellow colourway. And I wanted to put all three fabrics, I want to make sure I'm showing you the right way around, all three fabrics together because I thought that they would work really nicely together. So I've sewn up the Esty Shorts. There they are, um, in this gorgeous blue colourway, and they've got the patch pockets on the back. Then I've sewn up the top, and like I explained, I took out a little bit from the centre front. So I just, when I was cutting it out, I just moved it along a little bit. So I probably took about two centimetres out, but I think I've taken too much out. Um, it goes on, but you can see across my bust that it sort of squeezes my bust ever so slightly. So that top is gonna to go to Lola. And luckily I've got enough of this fabric um, left for me to be able to recut the top and sew it up. I was a bit sad actually when I'd sewn it and tried it on that it didn't fit, but it goes really nicely with these shorts. It's really cute. And then I'm part way through sewing up the um, Sew Over It Sorrento jacket. So that is the back yoke uh, with the shoulder yoke pattern pieces. I've constructed part of the front of the jacket as well. Um, I now need to put that together, do the top stitching. There's loads left to do, so I won't explain what I still need to get done. But I think that's going to make a really cute spring summer jacket. And I've got plans to get that finished next week um, when I finish for the summer holidays. So I have a really cute little kind of co-ord set that I can take on holiday, but I feel like it might be too hot to wear the jacket on holiday. 
um, but I'll have a really cute jacket that will go with lots of different things that I've got in my wardrobe too. So that's kind of probably say about a quarter of the way through with the jacket. But I don't want to rush the jacket because there's lots of kind of top stitching that I want to make sure that I'm really accurate with. But I'm really enjoying sewing that up so far. I'm going to keep looking down so I don't miss anything. Um, then I um, bought a pattern which I'm going to talk about when I talk about the patterns in this video. But it is the new pattern from Sew Over It which is called the Sophia Dress. And I fell in love with this as soon as they started showing snippets of the dress pattern. I fell in love with the back detail. There's two different options, one where you can put buttons down the back and one where you can do the tie detail. And it was the tie detail that I absolutely fell in love with. Um, I was hoping to get this finished. Did I get this finished? Yeah, I did get this finished for the So Fruity Challenge that Blossom Sandwich was hosting on Instagram. It's such a fun challenge. So I did get this dress finished actually, because tomatoes are technically a fruit. So I was really keen to have this dress finished so that I could enter it into that uh, competition. I will talk about the pattern in a bit more detail uh, later on in the video, but this is my version. I absolutely love it. It's got a gentle kind of sweetheart neckline and you create that by um, putting some gathers in the front bodice. It is lined. I didn't have enough of the tomato print fabric to line it with the same fabric. So I've got some pink gingham. Um, it has two options for the skirt. I just went for a gathered skirt. And then the back detail, the skirt has got this elastic, which creates this kind of scoop on the back. And then you've also got this big bow. Um, it's quite chunky, the bow on this one, because it's a cotton poplin that I'd used, but it's a really cute feature. Really difficult to um, kind of show you what it looks like, um, kind of not on me, but I have got pictures. But that is the back detail of the dress. And then that is the front detail of the dress. Um, when I was sewing up my version, I had to play around with the fit of the bodice. I found that the straps were too long, far too long. In the end, I think I took about four and a half, five inches off the length of the straps, which is quite a significant amount uh, to take off the pattern piece. And then what I also found with the elastic in the back, they suggested 45 centimetres of elastic for this channel here. I actually ended up taking 20 centimetres off that and I only used 25 centimetres of elastic for the back of it because I just found it was too gapy if I used the recommended amount of elastic. Um, so over it since I've caught, sort of gone back and forward with them and they said it's just a suggested amount of elastic but I would just say if you are going to sew it up you might not need as much elastic as they recommend because I definitely didn't. I ended up taking 20 centimetres off uh, the recommended length of elastic which I think is quite a lot actually to take out. I really love wearing this dress. Um, it is bra friendly and on the Sew Over It Instagram page there's a video that Rosie's filmed that shows you how to tie the, the bow on the back so that you hide your bra straps um, or your bra, yeah, your bra strap across the back. There's a video that's really helpful um, and it does conceal your bra as well. So I'll put pictures in of me wearing this dress. I absolutely love the dress and I've got plans to sew up quite a few more of them um, for the summertime. Um, and I think that fabric is so fun, the tomatoes. I think it's such a cute, um, really different fabric. And it was a really fun dress to sew up. And then inspired by that dress and also my love for the Tilly and the Buttons Mabel dress, I haven't done a pattern hack for a while, um, but I started thinking about whether I could kind of merge elements of the Sophia dress with the Mabel dress. And that's exactly what I've done with this fabric, Ooh, it's still on the hanger, um, that I got from Hey So Sister. It was a um, faulty piece of fabric and you'll see when I hold it up because on the top, the lemons have got yellow on, but on the rest of the fabric, they don't have any color or detail on them at all. They're just white empty spaces. I don't think it matters with the busyness of the fabric. I think it just looks like the print. This is definitely going to be a really difficult dress to hold up because the back is completely open. So what I wanted to do was construct the Tilly and the Buttons Mabel dress as the pattern suggests. So I've done the front as usual. I've got the shearing on the skirt at the bottom. Um, I did the short sleeves with the shearing, which is just absolutely beautiful. I love the sleeve detail on this. And then I've also got the elastic in the shoulders for the sleeves too. 
Um, the skirt on the back had the shearing and I constructed the skirt pretty much as the pattern suggests. The only difference I did was I added a couple of centimetres on the back skirt piece so that I could create, I don't know if you can see, but I've created a channel um, at the top where I've threaded some elastic to replicate the skirt on the Sophia dress where you've got that channel for the elastic. I chose to still do the shearing detail on the back skirt because I thought that would really help with the gathering as well. And then I've got an elastic channel. So the skirt isn't attached to the bodice on the back of the dress. And then you don't have a back bodice piece on my version. Instead, I've taken the, um, the ties from the Sophia dress and they, I made sure that they matched up. It's gonna be really difficult to show you, but I made sure that the width of the ties where is it? It's going to be so difficult to show you. I am going to do a video where I explain in more detail how I created this hack. Um, but I made sure that the width of the ties basically would match up with the sleeve and the front bodice part of the Mabel dress is so tricky to show you. Um, and I've kind of sandwiched the ties in with the sleeve and the front bodice piece as you would with the back bodice piece of the Mabel. So I've just used the ties basically as the back bodice piece, um, but there's two separate ties so that you can create that lovely bow detail on the back of the dress. I will put images in of this dress so you can see what it looks like, but basically I didn't cut out the back bodice piece of the Mabel dress, I cut out ties from the Sophia dress, and then I just attached the ties on either side of the Mabel dress like you would with the back bodice piece. Um, and then it creates this really gorgeous back detail. So you have the bow going across the back, so tricky to show you. Um, you have the bow detail going across the back and then the skirt at the back is open. So you've got this cutout detail on the lower back and then you've got a cutout detail on the top of the dress. Um, images will help to show you properly and I am going to be sewing a video tutorial to show you how to create this dress. I've got plans to film that in the next couple of weeks once I've finished work for the summer holidays. Um, and I'm going to be using a fabric that is more stable, so it's just easier to show you how to construct the Mabel slash Sophia dress um, with that gorgeous bow detail. But I'm really pleased with that hack. Um, there was points throughout sewing it where I wasn't quite sure if it was gonna work out, but actually it did. Um, and that was mainly because I made sure the tie detail width um, matched up with the sleeve detail at the back and the front bodice so it just acted as though it was the back pattern piece from the Mabel but obviously that back detail is open instead of having it closed like you would with the Mabel pattern so a really enjoyable hack and I'm really pleased that it has worked out. Um, the other thing that I've been busy sewing and I've talked about this quite a lot was the um, Cocoa Hour Crafts Hazelnut Backpack and my blog has gone live on the Felicity Fabrics website so I'll link it down below so you can go and read it but here is my backpack again it's so difficult to hold up a backpack um, I found it so difficult to photograph the backpack um, I chose not to put in a zip at the top and instead I've gone with snaps um, if I made this again I think I would put the zip in I'll be honest I found some of the instructions with the hazelnut backpack a little bit confusing um, and Anna has got a video sew along and I found myself referring back to the sew along um, on her YouTube channel for elements of the bag. I think I just haven't sewn a bag before. So there were some parts that just made me not really understand what I needed to do. Um, this canvas fabric, absolutely gorgeous from Felicity Fabrics. And I think it works really nicely for a backpack. I actually bought these kind of fastens for the bag, but I could not work out how you attach them. I couldn't find a video tutorial on it or anything. So in the end, I went with the plastic clasp fastens. I would much preferred to have used the metal, but I just couldn't figure out how to attach them. That's what the back looks like. Um, so if anyone has ever attached these two bags, please let me know if there's a tutorial I can follow because I've got a box of them now. I just don't know how to attach them. Um, I'd really appreciate it if anyone's got any top tips or can point me in the right direction of finding some information on how to attach those. For now, um, well, I'm not going to unpick this, but I've just got these uh, plastic clasps on the bag. Um, I chose to line the bag with a cotton fabric that I had in my stash already, which looks like that. 
and then I have got the zip in the back as well so I could pop like my keys and my phone and my purse in there if I wanted to it's a really roomy bag I tested it out by putting loads of books in there and um, I think I put some wool in there I just stuffed it with loads of things and I was able to get so much stuff in the bag um, it's got these really gorgeous pockets at the front um, so maybe I could put like tissues and things in there um, the back I went with the padded straps and then it was my first time using webbing actually um, but I really enjoyed using webbing and then I chose to put some more webbing on the inside just to give those straps a little bit of stability um, and then it has got um, sort of a side panel and at the bottom it's quite a boxy sort of panel too so it is a really really roomy bag um, so I'll link the blog down below because that gives you a bit more information about how I got on with it and I'll also link the tutorial if you do have the pattern um, the video tutorial that Anna put together because I found that really useful in terms of helping me um, sort of understand the pattern um, and then the other thing with the pattern you've got a little handle on the top as well which I thought was a really lovely feature I found it really difficult to photograph the bag um, it was so hard to get really good pictures of the backpack um, but I'm really pleased with how it's turned out and I'm really looking forward to using it um, just when I'm out and about with my family. I think it'd be a really great bag to take out with me. So I'll link all the things down below for that bag. And then the other thing that I've been busy sewing and I'm still busy sewing, um, I've got, I'm aiming to sew 16 of these because I've got lots of people at work that I want to say thank you to. It's that time of year where I start thinking about thank you presents and I do manage quite a big team, so I want to make something for all of them. I have given myself the task of sewing up some water bottle um, sort of bags. Um, working in the early years, um, we don't have a break like the rest of the team do in Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2. We don't have a morning break. Um, our morning starts from when the children come in until lunchtime. Um, and we've all got water bottles that we want to carry around. Very busy in the day. Sometimes we'll be inside, sometimes we'll Sometimes we'll be outside, sometimes we'll be playing in the block corner, sometimes we'll be playing in the home corner. So um, quite often we spend a lot of our day going, I've lost my water bottle, I don't know where it is. So I thought water bottle bags would be perfect for my team because they can um, pop them on, pop their water bottles in and always have them with them no matter what they're doing, whether it's in the garden or inside or you know running around getting resources and things, they'll always have their water bottles with them. So I had to look for patterns. I just did a Google search for water bottle bag holders. I think that's what I typed into Google. And there was a pattern company that came up and I'm gonna talk, um, well, I might as well talk about the pattern now. So the company that came up was a company called Sunflower Seams Pattern Company. And the pattern that came up was the Coral Water Bottle Bag, which looks like this. It's a really cute bag. Um, it's got a pocket on the front the top you've got a casing which has got a little bit of elastic in just to give a little bit of security with the bag and then you've got straps that go all the way over and it's a crossover style bag and the straps can be adjustable. It took me a while to figure out how to thread the straps through here and I have figured it out with the four bags that I finished and I've just clipped the straps in place where I need to stitch them so the bags are almost finished I just need to finish off the strap detail. With the pattern, they recommend that you sew the strap using the same fabric, but I've used fat quarters for the bag, so I didn't have enough of the fabric to sew the straps because you need quite a lot of length to sew up the straps. In the end, I had loads of this webbing left over from sewing up the Kokowawa Crafts hazelnut backpack, and I've just ordered some more. And actually, if you're going to sew up this pattern, I would recommend webbing. It's so much easier. And I just measured how much webbing I needed based on the pattern piece for the handle. And I think I needed 180 centimetres of the webbing per bag. So actually I've ordered some more of that and it's ended up being much quicker using the webbing. So I haven't had to worry about folding the, um, the strap fabric, top stitching it, pulling it through. Um, it's made it much quicker just using um, webbing. So that's what the pattern looks like. I'll link it down below. I bought it from Etsy. I think it was less than six pounds in price. Um, there were lots of tutorials that I came across where you could draft it yourself but if I'm being honest I just wanted a pattern where somebody had already done it for me um, and it's a really great pattern comes together really quickly I sewed up four of these water bottle bags last night in about two hours so it comes together really quickly even quicker if you use the webbing rather than making your own straps 
and I've used, uh, I was going to say I've used back quarters for all of them, but I haven't. I've used scrap fabrics, offcuts of things for some of them, but for most of the bags that I'm going to be sewing up, I have used back quarters. This was a piece of fabric that I got from the um, Faye Studio Jepsons when she was selling off bundles of fabric. So this is what it looks like. You've got a pocket at the front. There's an elastic channel at the top, which just provides a little bit of extra security. And then I've just attached the webbing um, as per the instructions for the straps. You do need a D-ring to attach the straps and then you need the um, bag sliders. I don't know what you call them. And then this is what the bag looks like. You can see I just need to finish off that part of the strap. Um, but it is fully adjustable if I stand up fully adjustable in terms of the length um, and that's what it looks like so I thought it's quite handy just to pop your water bottle in and then there is a little pocket at the front if they wanted to pop post-it notes or pens or plasters or tissues or whatever um, so I'm really thrilled with that and then you've got this little ba um, bottom detail which obviously helps with the water bottle and also it is fully lined so I've just used the same fabric to fully line it so that's the first one that I've sewn up the second one matches my um, sort of SD cord, but I'm, I haven't made one for me and I probably won't make one for me. Well, not at the moment anyway. So it's just in this fabric from Hazel Sister. It's got the pocket at the front. Again, it's fully lined. You've got the elastic at the top. Um, and then I've just got the webbing again on there. Then I've sewn up the other two are using fat quarters from a So Heady Jane box. So this one was last month. Um, so June's box, which was travel themed, um, and I've just got white webbing on that one. And then this one, I can't remember which box this was from, but this might have been a while ago. Um, so it's like jungle print and there's the pocket. And again, I've just got white webbing um, on that bag. And I think it's going to be a really handy gift um, for everybody. So as you can see, I've only sewn up four so far. I've got lots more to be busy sewing. I think I've got 13, yeah, 13 more to sew up. So I've got them all cut out, ready to go. I've prepared the, the uh, pocket. I just need the webbing and then I can get on with sewing those up. So that's going to keep me busy over the next week because I've got a week until we finish uh, for the summer holidays. Um, but I thought that was a really good idea for a gift. Um, so I link the pattern down below in case you think it's something that you would like to make for somebody else or make for yourself. Ruby and Lola have already requested them um, for themselves and actually I think they'll be really handy for when we're on holiday too just to pop their water bottles in. So the next thing I wanted to share with you was my crochet and how I've been getting on with that. So last time I shared I was almost finished with the drawstring bag um, and you'll be pleased to know that I've actually finished it and I did wear it out to dinner the other night um, and here it is. I'm so thrilled with it. I'll pop it on so you can see. I did get an awful lift selfie of me um, with my outfit and my bag. So I'll pop that in so you can see because this is currently empty. It hasn't got anything in it. Um, but yeah, this is the drawstring bag. Um, it's got tassels on the front. It is quite roomy. I got my purse, my phone, my keys and my glasses in the bag. Um, and I think it looks really cute. Um, when I was following the instructions, I crocheted the handle and as you can see where I've tied it, I feel like the handle is far too long for me. So I have crocheted it far too long. I followed the instructions, but for my personal preference, I feel like that's a little bit too long. So I might go back and correct the length of the handle because you can see all of those um, sort of stitches. I don't need all of that length. Um, I'll see. I don't know if I will go back and correct it, but I'm really thrilled with my little tassel bag. Um, I think it's really cute and it's going to be a really great handy little bag um, just to pop things in when I'm going out as well. And then inspired by that, I've now been crocheting another bag following the Bella Coco Bella, Bella Coco? I can never remember which way around it is. Bella Coco, I think it is, crochet. There's a market bag um, tutorial that she's got on her, on her YouTube channel. It's taking me ages to crochet it. Let me take the hook out a minute. Um, but this is what it's looking like so far. I've still got another, I think, 20 of these rows to do. Um, but it's going to be one of those sort of um, mesh market bags. And you can see that it stretches. Um, I'm really enjoying crocheting this. I think it looks super pretty. Um, that kind of pattern that I've got going on is really pretty. It's really repetitive. So it's the perfect thing to crochet in the evenings when I'm tired after work 
or if I'm watching something like The Sewing Bee, which I've been really enjoying watching. Um, so I've still got another 20 of these rows to go and then there's a little bit more of the video um, for finishing the bag, but I'm really enjoying crocheting that. And then I've just got some wool, which I'll share at the end of this video um, because I'm going to be crocheting a cardigan. Um, but I've definitely been hit by the crochet bug. I'm really, really enjoying it. And I feel like I'm really getting the hang of it as well. There's still tons to learn as there is with sewing, um, but I'm really enjoying um, sort of learning to crochet. And I feel like this has stuck more than knitting has stuck with me. Um, so I thought I'd update you with how I'm getting on with that. Both bags at the moment. Um, I've got plans to do a cardigan. I'm halfway through my snood with the granny squares. Um, and then I would like to have a go at maybe doing like a crochet jumper. Um, so I just need to look for a few patterns. And then somebody sent me a link, I've got it up here, to a book. Um, who is? I'm really sorry, I can't remember who it was that sent me the link, but somebody sent me a link to this, um, which is a modern girl's guide to granny squares. I mean, look at that range of granny squares. So I'm gonna take this on holiday with me and try and work through some of the patterns, in particular, this one. I think that is a gorgeous granny square. This one I really love too. There's so many in there um, that are so fun. Like, look at that one, it's really fun. Um, so I'm really hoping, that one's beautiful too. They're all kind of like rainbow vibes. I absolutely love this book. So thank you, who I, I cannot, I'm really sorry that I can't remember who it was, but thank you to whoever it was that suggested this book. I'm gonna take this on holiday. I've got some crochet hooks and some wool that I'm gonna take on holiday. And I'm just gonna enjoy learning to master some of the crochet squares in this book. Okay, the next thing I wanted to share with you was some beautiful buttons that I've been buying from the lovely Buffins Vintage Buttons on Etsy. Um, and there are so many gorgeous buttons, absolutely beautiful. Um, I stopped at these three. This one, gorgeous green colourway. I think it's such a beautiful button. It's got a really gorgeous pattern on it. Then these ones, absolutely gorgeous. They've got beautiful flowers on. They really reminded me of like watercolour painting. They're absolutely stunning. So pretty. And then I've got these ones, which again, really remind me of like a watercolour. And I think you could sew these on either way. So it's sort of got like a clear plastic in the back. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but clear plastic in the back. And then it's got this sort of painted kind of swirly detail in the middle. So you could have it that way where you can see the swirly detail or you could have it the other way where you've got the clear and it almost magnetize, magnet magnifies. It almost magnifies the sort of swirly effect. I thought it was really beautiful. I'll link Buffins Vintage Buttons down below if you haven't seen them. Um, but they've got so many gorgeous buttons. I just couldn't resist those. I'm going to add those to my button stash. Um, I don't have any plans for them at the moment, but I'm going to add them to my button stash. Um, but thank you so much, Arga. Your buttons are absolutely gorgeous and the customer service is always amazing too. Always really speedy and they come wrapped up. Every button comes individually wrapped. It must take you ages to wrap them. Absolutely gorgeous. And then you get a really lovely little um, sort of note card with a handwritten note on there too. Um, so beautiful buttons. I thought those buttons actually might go on some of my crochets, like if I'm crocheting a cardigan, they might go on something like that, um, or maybe some dresses that I've got plans to sew up too. So the next thing I wanted to share with you was a few patterns that I've been busy buying, and then there's one pattern that's been released that I haven't bought, but it's a beautiful pattern, so I thought I'd share it with you. So the lovely Tamlin, who is sewn on the tine, has talked about this pattern company before, um, and they sell um, mainly swimwear, but there's a couple of other patterns on their website too. And they're called Edgewater Avenue. So I've bought two swimwear patterns with my summer holidays in mind. And I'm going to be sewing both of them up for um, the summer holiday that I'm going on. Um, one of them I'm really excited about sewing up. The other one is totally out of my comfort zone. Um, and sometimes I think it's good to sew something that's totally out of your comfort zone. I've done that quite a lot recently and then been really surprised with how I feel in terms of wearing the garments. Um, in particular, the sort of open back dresses that I've been sewing, that's totally out of my comfort zone, but I've actually been really enjoying wearing those dresses. Um, anything that's sort of low cut is out of my comfort zone, but I've actually been really enjoying wearing those style of garments too. So there's two swimwear patterns. I'm just gonna grab my smaller notebook 
because that's got the pattern information in. So I don't have either of the swimwear pattern instructions printed, so I will put in some images of what the swimwear patterns look like for you. So the first swimwear pattern is the Marley One Piece swimwear pattern from Edgewater Avenue. Um, it's a one piece asymmetrical swimsuit. It almost looks like it could be a two piece. And what I'm planning to do is sew up the top part of the swimsuit and the bottom part of the swimsuit in two separate colours. So it does look like a two piece. So it's an asymmetric one piece swimsuit with a cutout in the middle, um, moderate coverage, and you only need a metre of fabric to sew it up. Um, and they recommend that you use the same fabric for the lining fabric for this as well. I really love the look of the sort of one shoulder piece. You've got a little bit of a cut, it, cut out detail across the tummy and then the pants bottom section looks like a full coverage pants. So I'm really looking forward to sewing that one up. It comes in sizes extra small to extra, extra large. And they recommend, um, in terms of fabrics, nylon spandex, poly spandex, or swimwear fabric that's got four way stretch. So I've got some fabric that I'm gonna show you and when I move on to my fabrics for this video. Okay. The other pattern is totally out of my comfort zone. There'll be a lot of flesh on show when I do wear this swimsuit. Um, we're going to be staying in a villa, so I don't mind wearing it because there won't be anybody else around. It'll just be my family. But it's the Talia one piece swimsuit. So it's a one piece, one piece swimsuit. It's got an ultra high cut leg, which is totally out of my comfort zone. Keyhole cut out across the bust. So it does look quite revealing at the front as well. It's got a thong cut for the bottom. I am gonna look to see if I can adjust the pattern so I've got a bit more coverage on the bottom um, for the back piece, because I'm not quite keen on having a thong for the, the bottom area. Um, so I'll see if I can adjust the pattern piece for a bit more coverage on the back. Um, and then it's got this tie detail across the back, which I absolutely love. Um, it is not something that I would, if I went into a shop and saw this swimsuit, it's not something that I would go and buy. Um, but it does look like a really interesting construction and it looks like something that could be quite fun to sew up as well. Um, and I do think, like I've said already, it's sometimes it's good to try something that's totally out of your comfort zone. So I'm looking forward to sewing up both of those swimsuits. And then the other pattern I've already talked about, the water bottle bag pattern. Um, I would definitely recommend that pattern. It comes together really nicely and it was a really enjoyable sew as well. And I think they're going to make really lovely gifts. And then the other pattern I wanted to talk about in a bit more detail, I've already shared my version, but it's the Sew Over It Sophia dress. So there are two different versions that you can sew up. Both of them have got the same sort of sweetheart neckline at the front. It's the back detail and the skirt where there, there are variations. So you can sew up this variation with the tie bow detail at the back, and then it's got a tiered skirt. On my version, I decided to do just a gathered skirt with the tie detail on the back because I didn't have enough of the fabric to do the tiered skirt. And then there's another version where they've got buttons down the back and then these really wide straps as well. It comes in sizes UK 6 to 30. Um, the Sophia dress can work beautifully in a range of fabrics. For a more structured look, choose light to medium weight woven fabrics like a cotton poplin, cotton lawn, linen, seersucker or broderie or anglaise. And due to the gathered nature of the skirt, they recommend avoiding anything too bulky. If you'd like something softer, you can opt for a viscose or a crepe. Um, you'll need a lightweight cotton lawn for the bodice lining, or you can also line it in the main fabric. So I just use the lightweight cotton gingham fabric. You need some elastic, which is six millimetres, um, and a small length of ribbon or bias binding. And if you're sewing version two, you'll also need um, four or five 18 millimetre buttons so that's for this detail here where you've got the button down back detail i really love the look of this version with the tiered skirt i just didn't have enough of the tomato print fabric so the next version i'm going to sew up i've definitely got plans for plenty of these i'm going to sew up the tie back detail here um, and then i'm going to do the tiered skirt detail and what i'm thinking about doing is using gingham fabric that's the same color but different size um, sort of squares of the gingham, so like a large scale gingham and a small style gingham, um, using this version and two different types of gingham fabrics. So I'm looking forward to giving that a try. And then I've got a viscose fabric that I'd like to sew the Sophia dress up in. Um, I wanna see what the viscose is like, because the cotton poplin is quite a thick fabric and quite a sturdy fabric, so the bow really stands out. And I think you would get a softer look if I used a viscose fabric. So I've definitely got plans for plenty more of that pattern. 
Like I said, when I showed you my version, I did have to adjust the straps and I also had to adjust the elastic in the back of the skirt as well. So those were the only adjustments that I had to make um, for the pattern. So the next pattern I wanted to share with you is a pattern that's just been released by Fabric Godmother and it's the peony dress. Absolutely gorgeous pattern. I haven't bought it and I know that I'm not going to buy it because I know that it's a dress that I just wouldn't um, enjoy wearing. Um, it's just not really my style, although I've seen so many absolutely beautiful versions of the dress. I just know that I wouldn't reach for it if I did sew it. Um, so it's by Fabric Godmother. It comes in sizes 6 to 30. It's a PDF only pattern and it's aimed at intermediate sewists because there are a few sort of trickier and um, sort of sewing aspects to the pattern. There's two views. View A has got a frill on the sleeves and on the skirt and it stops just above the ankles. And view B stops at the mid thigh and it's got no frill on the dress. Um, it can be dressed up or dressed down dependent on what type of fabric you use. There's couture technique um, in there to add this gorgeous like shoulder puff to your dress and it creates this sort of broad shoulder look. And um, there's darts and a concealed zip and um, like I said, the gathered frills option on view A for the sleeves and also on the skirt. In terms of recommended fabrics, they recommend drapey, viscose, crepe, silk, cotton lawns. Or if you want a more structured look, mid to lightweight denim, corduroy, poplin um, for more structure with the dress. There are so many absolutely beautiful versions over on Instagram. Absolutely love all of the versions that I've seen so far. I just know for me it's a pattern that I wouldn't um, get a lot of wear out of. Um, in terms of some pattern features, um, there's waists. the waist seam sits one centimetre above the natural waist. The skirt gently skims the hips. Um, it's not a really closely fitted garment, but there are darts in the front and back bodice and the skirt to adjust the fit. And I think from memory, there's darts in the shoulders as well. And it's got this really gorgeous, like, um, puff shoulder detail as well. And there's a pure couture technique, which you are shown how to sew um, with the pattern as well. So many beautiful versions, like I said, in so many different patterns and fabrics. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm just going to enjoy watching everybody else's versions. I know deep down this is a pattern that's not my style, so I won't be buying it, but it is a beautiful pattern. And so many people have been raving about it as well. So I thought I'd let you know, just in case you haven't seen it. So that was all the patterns that I wanted to share with you today. Now on to my favourite thing to share, which is fabrics. I have got a whole bumper stack of fabrics that I want to share with you today. The first fabric, I think I've bought probably about five metres of it in total. And I got this from Stitch and Ink and I have got plans to sew up a dress for myself and a matching shirt for my husband. And if I've got any of the fabric left, then I'm going to sew up some shorts for Ruby and Lola to take away with us on holiday so we can all match. Um, and it is this really fun fabric. It's a cotton fabric, cotton poplin um, from Stitch and Ink. I've got loads of the fabric. I think I have definitely got probably about five, if not six metres of the fabric because I ordered it for myself and then my husband saw it and he was like, I love that. Um, I would definitely wear a shirt in that fabric. So I went back and ordered some more. Um, it's got such a fun design and I think it screams summer holidays as well. Um, you can see it's got like pineapples on, um, it's got fish on there, um, there's deck chairs. Oh, that looks like it's upside down, but there's deck chairs, there's pineapples, there's leaf print, there's just patterns all over it. And I really love the sort of pastel shades of colour on that print as well. So I'm going to use it to sew up a Maya Sotis dress for myself and then I'm going to use the McCall's, I think it's a 6044 shirt pattern that I sew up every year for my husband um, and he's going to have a shirt in this and then if there's enough left I'll use the Tilly and the Buttons Esky pattern to sew up some shorts for Ruby and Lola in that fabric as well. I think I should have enough of it left because um, I have got so much of it and it is quite a wide fabric as well so hopefully we'll all have something um, in the same fabric to take on holiday with us. That did sell out, I did buy the last part of the fabric from Stitch and Ink but if I can find it anywhere else or they've got it back in stock I'll link it down below for you. Then I've got some fabric from Hazel Sister. The first two are swimwear fabrics and I'm going to be using these for um, one of the Edgewater Avenue patterns. So the first pattern I described which was the Marley one piece. And I'm gonna use these together. So I think I'm gonna use the peachy color 
on the top and then I'm going to use the lilac colour on the bottom because I think those two just work really nicely together. I think they really complement each other. So I've got firm plans for both of those and I'm really excited about giving that swimsuit pattern a try. And um, I really enjoy trying different patterns. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. Then with those two colours, I just think are absolutely gorgeous together. And then I've bought this cotton lawn fabric and I think I'm gonna use this to sew up the Sew Over It Sophia dress, I think. Um, if anyone's got any suggestions for the fabric, do let me know. I've got three metres of it. It's quite a wide fabric. I just fell in love with that print. Uh, it's got green all over it and flowers. And I just really loved all these images that are all over it. Of the two people just stood in the water with their swimwear on. Um, yeah, I just thought it was a really pretty fabric. Um, quite unusual, very different. And it's just repeated that pattern all the way through. It's quite a lightweight fabric um, because it's a lawn. It's got that really lovely sort of texture to it as well because it's a lawn fabric. Um, it is quite light and um, quite airy and I think it'll feel really nice to wear as well. And I think it'll work really nicely for the Sophia dress. So I think I've talked myself into using this fabric for the Sophia dress. Absolutely gorgeous. If they've got any of that left, I'll link it down below. And then in my last Sunday Sewing Catch Up video, I talked about getting some vouchers for my birthday and I got a voucher for Fabric Godmother and there was a fabric that I have been lusting after for absolutely ages and it's this gorgeous green gingham fabric. I think this was a viscose linen uh, from memory and I've wanted to buy it for ages. It was sold out for ages so I signed up to get a notification for when it came back in stock. It came back in stock and I bought myself three metres using a voucher that my work friends um, got for me. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to turn it into yet. I was thinking possibly like a blazer with some trousers, like a co-ord set. Um, but I'm not 100% uh, sure yet what I'm going to turn it into. I just absolutely loved that green sort of gingham and that colour, that apple green colour is just absolutely gorgeous and really vibrant. So no firm plans with this fabric yet. Um, but I'm just really pleased that I managed to get my hands on some of it when it came back into stock. And then there was a fabric from Sony Sunshine, which I've been talking about for absolutely ages, um, that I wanted to get for my birthday. And again, I've got a voucher, so I was able to use the voucher to buy this fabric. It's a fabric I've had my eye on for ages. I've talked about it loads in my Sunday sewing catch-ups as well. And I've shared images of this fabric. So to have it in front of me now, it's just beautiful. It's an embroidered cotton. So it's got circles embroidered onto it, absolutely stunning. It's got a slight sheen to it as well. It's obviously textured where you've got those embroidered circles. I got three meters of this fabric. Um, I had plans originally to turn it into like a crop jacket with some quite fitted trousers. I think I'm still gonna go with that, but I don't have a pattern in mind yet. So if anyone's got any suggestions of some, I think high-waisted trousers, because that's my preference when I'm wearing trousers. I like high-waisted, quite fitted, with a little bit of wiggle room and then a little cropped jacket I think in this fabric and then I have to think about what I would line the jacket in and um, I just absolutely love that fabric it's so beautiful those circles give such a gorgeous texture and just a really cute sort of detail to the fabric and that sort of blush pink is not a colour that I would normally um, choose for myself and obviously it's plain apart from that fabric um, apart from that pattern from the circles um, but there was just something about that fabric that I fell in love with. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm looking forward to turning that into something. I'm just not quite sure what yet. And then this beautiful brocade, brocade, brocade fabric. Not quite sure how you say it. Um, they had it in a few colourways. They did have it in a pastel colourway, which was the colour that I wanted to go for, but that sold out really quickly. So instead, I've gone for this sort of blush pink. Absolutely gorgeous. Again, it's got a bit of a sheen to it got texture because it's a brocade brocade fabric um absolutely gorgeous no idea what i'm going to turn it into yet um i feel like maybe it needs to be a jacket um but i'm not sure what pattern yet i just fell in love with that um beautiful fabric and that beautiful detail that print is stunning and again it's pink pink is not a color that i go for very often but i just absolutely fell in love with that detail it's so pretty um, so if you've got any suggestions for this fabric, please do let me know in the comments below. So quite a few birthday purchases, which I was very excited about. Um, but that's all the fabric that I wanted to share with you today. So the next thing I wanted to talk about, there's a couple of sewing meetups that are going to be happening in the next couple of weeks. 
Um, so I've just made a note of them, so I thought I'd share them with you, just in case you're in the area. So the first one is being organised by the lovely Sam, who is Sequin Girly, and she's organising a Southern Social, um, which is going to be taking part on the 2nd of September, and I'm really hoping to make it there. It's about an hour's drive from me, quite a straightforward drive, so I'd really love to make it to that. That's just before school goes back, um, so I think it'd be a really lovely sort of end of summer um, treat to go and spend some time with lots of lovely sewists and chat about fabric and patterns and possibly do some sewing. So I'll link um, Sequin Girlie's channel down below so you can go and find out a bit more information about that. But that's a Southern Social um, on the 2nd of September. And then Sew Me Sunshine are going to be celebrating their sixth birthday, which is just amazing. Absolutely love Sew Me Sunshine. And I'm really sad I can't make the birthday celebrations because it's happening when I'm on holiday. So they are doing a birthday celebration kind of open event and um, where you can go and visit Sew Me Sunshine. And that's taking place on the 12th of August between 11 and 3 p.m. And they're based in Chiswick, if anyone was wondering where they were and they thought that maybe they could make it to that. It looks really fun. I've only been able to make it to one social that Sew Me Sunshine have had, like an open day event, because all the others have landed on market days. I went to a one at Christmas and bought some really gorgeous fabric. So I'm really sad to be missing out on that because I think it'll be a really fun day. Um, but yes, they're going to be celebrating their sixth birthday on the 12th of August, 11 till 3, and they're based in Chiswick. And then Blossom Sandwich and Melanie Keane are going to be hosting a Surrey Sews picnic. And again, this is something that I would have been able to go to, but it's happening when I'm on holiday. So it's taking place on the 19th of August, 2.30 till 4.30 in Woking Park. So I'll link their Instagram pages down below so you can go and give them a follow if you don't already and find out a little bit more information about that, sun, that um, sort of sewing meetup as well. Um, really sad to be missing out on them. There's one out of the three that I'll be able to definitely join. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd let you know about those. And then the final thing I wanted to share with you before I talk about my sewing plans was a YouTube channel. And it's the lovely Agata. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. I'm really sorry if I'm not. And her daughter Alice. They've got a YouTube channel called In Agata's Cottage. I'll link it down below. They've got loads of videos on their channel already. Really enjoyable content to watch. A whole host of videos. Um, and I've really enjoyed kind of working my way through um, the videos currently. Um, so I'll link their channel down below. They're really trying to get to 600 followers. So if you don't follow them already, it'd be really lovely to head over and give them a little follow to try and get them to 600 um, followers before I think it's her daughter's birthday I think it's Alice's birthday um, so do head over to their channel if you don't follow them already and give them a little follow so the final thing I always like to finish these videos with are my sewing plans so I'm definitely plodding on with the water bottle bags and I've got lots cut out so I'll show you I've got the pockets pressed so I can show you what I'm hoping to sew up so I've got um, a bag in this fabric uh, these are all fat quarters. This one, I've got this one, and um, these ones are from the latest So Hilly Jane box. And then there's that one, and then there's like a zigzag one too. I've got an off cut of a viscose linen from my SD set. Um, this is a fat quarter. This is an off cut from a Mabel dress that I sewed up. And then I've got another fat quarter fabric too. So I've got lots of those that are going to keep me really busy. Then I also want to have a go at sewing up their swimming costume and I'm going to also hopefully finish my crochet bag. I think that's going to take me a few weeks though if I'm honest. And then I'm also carrying on crocheting granny squares because I've got 18 granny squares to crochet for the snood. And then I've also got some wool that I got from the wool warehouse and I'll grab some in a minute to show you the different colours that I've ordered. And I'm going to be using those to crochet some granny squares so that I can make the, oh, what's the pattern called? It's by Pigeon Nest. Um, it's called the Yes You Cardican pattern by the Pigeon's Nest. So I'm going to be crocheting lots of granny squares to make that cardigan as well in some different colourways. So I'll go and grab the wool so I can show you what colours I've gone for. So I've gone for, I probably can't hold them all up at the same time these colours together. I think they're going to work so nicely as a cardigan, sort of pastel-y colours. Um, I think they're going to work so nicely together. Um, really love that green. There's a baby blue, this sort of lemon yellow, 
uh, what's that one called, Wisteria, uh, Baby Pink, and then this sort of orangey, like Sherbet Orange, I want to say. Gorgeous. So I think they're all going to work really nicely together. I'm hoping to take this on holiday with me. I'm hoping it doesn't take up too much space in my um, suitcase. And then I'm going to take crochet hooks with me so that I can just crochet lots and lots of um, granny squares. And then hopefully when I get back, I'll be able to crochet them together to make the cardigan because I need to crochet quite a few of the granny squares as well. So that's all of my plans. Lots of things to keep me busy. I'm sure there'll be other things that I get sewn up as well. I'm also going to be carrying on with the Sorrento jacket in that gorgeous pink fabric. Uh, where is it? From um, In this gorgeous fabric from Hazo Sister. So I'm going to carry on with that as well. And also recut the uh, Tilina Buttons Esther top in the lemon colourway of that fabric as well. So I can sew it up. Hopefully it will fit me with my second version. So lots and lots of things to keep me busy. And that's everything I wanted to share with you today. I hope you've enjoyed hearing what I've been getting up to, seeing all the lovely fabrics that I've got, how I've been getting on with my crochet and my sewing plans. And um, if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd really love it if you could hit that subscribe button because you get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thank you as always for watching and thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it when you come back time and time again to watch my videos. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.